Hello and welcome back to Gardens by Lindsay. I am so excited for today's video because we upgraded the greenhouse. That's what this is right here. So I will put a link in the description down below to last year's greenhouse build. Um, this year we made some upgrades to the greenhouse. After the plants came out of the greenhouse last spring and everything was in the garden, we actually disassembled the greenhouse and we just had this cattle panel in an arch back here behind our garage all summer, all fall, all winter until now. And now it is a new greenhouse. So I am going to take you through this build I have some time-lapse footage that I will put in and I will talk about kind of what we did. A few weeks ago, I came to my husband Robbie with a sketch on my iPad and I said, this is how I wanna do the greenhouse this year. And he said, okay. <laughs> and he actually created the plans for this from scratch in Google SketchUp or SketchUp. And we created, um, the blueprint basically for this greenhouse. My brother-in-law came over yesterday and helped us build the frame and the base. And then today, Robbie and I came out and covered it in plastic, finished it up. Last year's greenhouse was less weather sealed than this one. This one is completely covered in plastic on all four sides. Last year's greenhouse actually had a hole in the back where, um, the air could come in and out. So that was because the plastic that I bought did not end up being big enough after I thought it would be big enough. So we had to kind of make it work, but we did, we made it work and it works just fine for last year's plants. This though should last uh, years. <laughs> this is made from one cattle panel, so it is not huge. The footprint of it is four foot by eight foot. A cattle panel is four feet tall, so it is four feet deep, and then I have the ends eight feet apart. I am only five foot five inches tall, I'm just at about five and a half feet, uh, so I don't need it to be super tall in the middle. Um, the middle at the highest point is just over six feet tall. The door on this greenhouse though is quite a bit shorter. It is about five feet tall. So I do actually have to duck to get in it. We could have done the door a little bit higher, um, but we didn't realize how tall the arch would be in the middle because this panel has been in an arch shape for over a year. When we pulled the ends out, it wanted to stay tall at the top, which is totally fine. The beautiful thing about things like this is that you can always upgrade them. You can change things. Uh, if next year I decide I wanna add more windows to it, we can do that. Yeah, here she is. My greenhouse even has a door. It has a full door this year. Last year, my door was a tarp zipper, um, which actually worked fine until it got, it froze um, like hard freeze one night and the adhesive on the zipper detached itself from the plastic and I actually had to staple it back together. That was the downfall <laughs> of that greenhouse. This greenhouse, that is not an issue at all. So I am gonna take you through here. We're gonna go inside and I'll show you all the things. Uh, down below, I will put a list of all the materials that we used. It was quite a bit. All in, I spent about $200 on this. I did not have to buy the panel. I already had the panel. So if you needed to buy a panel, add another $20 to that. Um, everything that we got besides the plastic came from uh, Menards. We did have to make one Lowe's run to get more two by fours, but that's just because the Lowe's in our town is next to the Chick-fil-A and we wanted Chick-fil-A for lunch. <laughs> so we went to Lowe's. <laughs> but everything else came from Menards. The plastic came from Amazon. Um, I will put a link to that down below. This is a really nice, thick plastic. It's a five year UV rated greenhouse plastic. So it's not just like a plastic drop cloth. This is a greenhouse UV rated plastic. And I paid for that. <laughs> this piece of plastic is 16 foot by 25 foot and I paid $65 for it or $60, something like that. So you pay for quality. This should last 
you know, five years, maybe four years, maybe six years. To me, that is well worth the price. It will keep my plants protected and it does not rip easily. It does not snag easily. So worth it. So let's get in this greenhouse. All right. So here is the front of the greenhouse. Like I said, this is eight feet from end to end. So this is just one two by four by eight foot board in the front and the back. And then these boards go inside and they go all the way across the sides of the panel. My panel did end up being actually 50 inches wide instead of 48 like it's supposed to be. So we did have to modify that slightly. But so this whole thing is about four feet by eight feet. So we do have an actual door here. And the construction of this, um, we tried to keep it relatively simple. The structure itself um, is made of two by fours. The door is made of one by fours and the windows are made of one by twos. I did not want the door to be super heavy. So it is one inch deep, um, the base of the greenhouse is two inches deep. So we do have an actual door. Um, the plastic, I just used my staple gun to attach it to the wood. And then all I did was I took a box cutter and just sliced around. The windows are the same on three sides. Um, attach the windows to the door with hinges. And this is the door. Now I do have like a kick plate type situation down here. Um, so I do have to step over that to get in. But we did that because we didn't realize that we could have done the door taller. And so because I am not super tall, I decided that we shouldn't just rebuild the door. We should just leave the door the way it is and just add this other kick plate. So I do have to step over... Um, two two by four stacked but totally fine not a big deal i don't hit my head because i have to step over that so it works perfectly for me so we have this thing mounted in the ground with two t-posts right now there's one on the front and one on the back we drove these into the ground and then we actually screwed them into the two by fours all the way down um there's one here and there's one on that brace back there so this thing should not move. We are going to add a couple smaller T-posts to the sides, but I thought we had some extra small T-posts and we didn't. So I will have to get some of those. Um, we do have a window up here in the front. It goes all the way down. Uh, we are, I think, going to, and maybe not this year, I may wait for next year, but we are going to add a hook up here and a chain to the window so I can open the window just a little bit. So take the chain, attach it to the hook and open it, you know, a little bit if I need to just let some air out or if I wanna open it all the way. So this does open all the way down. This is made by one with one by twos, just two hinges. We bought two different sizes of screws for this project. We did, two and a half and one and five eighths because we worked with two different thicknesses of boards. So we had two by fours and um, one buys. So this is just a gate handle from Menards. We have this secured on the door. We just use are using these types of closures. Um, inside the door, we chose to do this block method to attach things you know we could have done this differently but this is how we chose to do it and i'm happy with it the door is super sturdy um it's not going anywhere so that makes me happy in here in the back we basically did the same thing as in the front but just with a window instead of a door so this window actually opens out so the closure is on the outside we do have it braced with a two by four on the bottom and the top again we did our little block method here to attach these we just drilled or, or diagonally into this board to attach them and it worked out super well this year i am also doing dual thermometers <laughs> so I have this is a Bluetooth thermometer. I got this on Amazon. 
Uh, right now it says it's 75 degrees in here and it is 7.30 p.m. And then I also have this in here, which goes to a weather station um, inside the house. So this I just attached to the side of the door frame. And yeah, here it is. So we attached the panel. Um, I still have to come back. I ran out of staples for my staple gun. So I need to come back and kind of staple this stuff up. Um, but you know, it's, it's fine. So we attached the panel to the two by fours with pipe strapping and screws. So we buy this, you buy this in a roll, you just cut off what you need and then attach each vertical section to the two by four with two screws. So what I'm getting at is this thing is not going anywhere. It is anchored to the ground. The panel itself is anchored to this base super well. I came out this morning and leveled the gravel that it is sitting on because it is sitting on the gravel area that we have behind our garage. And it very quickly after we got it all done and had it all closed up, got over 100 degrees. Like within an hour, it got over 100 degrees. Um, it was in the low 70s today, so it was nice and warm. The sun was shining. Right now it is still um in the mid 70s in here so i am actually going to close it up tonight and keep it closed up i want to see how well it holds heat it is only supposed to get down into the 40s tonight but i want to see how much heat it loses overnight it will lose quite a bit because it is not heated but it is way more sealed than last year's greenhouse so I'm hopeful that I should not need any supplemental heat out here at all this year leading into planting time. Because last year I did have to use heat mats in the greenhouse. Now that's not the best way to heat your greenhouse, but that's the way I did it last year. I do not have power out here, so the way I get power out here is I actually run an extension cord from my garage out around here and then up into the greenhouse. So last year I did use some heat mats underneath my plants. On the days it was going to be cold or if it was going to freeze at night, I would leave the heat mats on all day and I would not open that greenhouse up. I would come out, I would turn on the heat mats in the morning and I would seal it up and leave it all day and all night. And that would usually keep it warm enough in there to keep it above freezing. But I shouldn't need to worry about that this year. This thing, this thing is sealed up. There is no, no big gaps, no holes. The only way air will get in and out without me letting it in and out is around the door and the windows. I'm not really worried about it at all. So in the back, we do have one more window and you can see it right here. And we just have another latch like this back here and it opens up all the way nice and big this is a it's a 20 by 24 inch window i think or maybe 18 by 24 i'm not sure uh 22 by 24 that's what it is i know i remember things so this is nice and sealed up as well we do have one t-post back here again screwed into the two by four and yeah that's it so we wrapped the sides I attached this, this side first with the plastic, then we worked in the back, and then we did the front, and then we did the other side. And you can kind of see we wrapped it, kind of like you wrap a present, and then like this. And then we actually tucked the excess under, and I'm going to come in and staple on the inside of this board the excess, and then I will cut off what's left. So. That's kind of how we wrapped it. Um, I wanted to keep the front and back as flat as possible because there are things that open. So we chose to put the excess on the sides. So you can see again, it's kind of wrapped and then wrapped and then stapled and then tucked under. So I will staple the plastic on the inside and that will actually be super helpful, I think, when it comes to 
keeping moisture off of this wood. So I'm basically just gonna take this up like this, staple it down here, and then cut off all this extra. So no moisture will be touching the wood on the bottom at all. So that should reduce the chances of it rotting quicker. I did not buy treated wood. I just bought regular um, pine <laughs> boards because wood prices are absolutely astronomical right now, which is why this project cost almost $200. This should not have cost almost $200, but because of the wood shortages that are happening right now, that is why wood prices are higher. So if you are looking to do a project like this for the spring, keep that in mind. Things are going to be more expensive, unfortunately, but now that it's done, I don't even have any plants out here yet, but now that it's done and I see it and I can go in and out of it and I can close this door and latch it up, I really think it was money well spent. Don't even have any plants out here yet. And I'm already super happy with it. So that is the greenhouse upgrade for 2021. I am so excited about it. I cannot wait to get more staples so I can finish stapling the plastic, get the shelves in here, get the plants moved out. The first thing that's gonna come out here actually is the tomatoes. Those are ready to come out. So I'm gonna try to get this thing finished up tomorrow afternoon and get those tomatoes out here um, they are about ready to be potted up honestly uh, quite a few of them have their first set of true leaves which is very exciting I do have a couple varieties that didn't germinate as well as I thought they would so I did plant some more seeds for those but that's okay it happens so I can't wait to get those out here once they're all up potted they're gonna take up a ton of room so this really needed to be done because I don't have the room in my basement to hold uh like 65 tomato plants <laughs> so it's done and i am a happy gardener <sighs> thank you so much for watching i am so excited to share this build with you if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below i am so happy to help i am by no means an export i am not a carpenter <laughs> but this is awesome so if you have questions please let me know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.